And we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Basement and Remodeling Basics. This is an online series brought to you by Blue Sky Remodeling. I'm your host, Mia Voss, and I'm so excited for this. We're going to give you so much information about what you need to know about basement and interior project remodeling, everything you need to know so that from start to finish your project goes well and you have a spectacular addition to your home. So, before we get started, I want you to go to YouTube and subscribe to Blue Sky Remodeling. And then also, you can go to blueskyremodelingdenver.com. They have an amazing free basement finishing cost estimator. Then you can also sign up for updates about this online series. You're going to get so much information. So, listen, we are going to get started. Today's show is obviously all about basement designs and how different lifestyles require different basement designs. So, I have with us two excellent experts. I have Adam Rossi and he's the president of Blue Sky Remodeling and then Julie Rossi is also joining him and she has a bunch of letters after her name. CFO, CO, CIO and VP of Quality. You are qualified. <laughs> it's great to talk with you both. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thanks Mia. I'm That's the president. She's the boss. Yeah, right. I see you. That's the, the uh, chain of command. I like that. <laughs> Alright, so tell us about Blue Sky Remodeling. Uh, well, Blue Sky Remodeling has been around since uh, 2007 as a, uh, a performing entity doing basement finishes and remodel type work. Uh, basement finishes is one of our main products that we do, and uh, we've been doing. I've been doing these for about 15 years. Blue Sky Remodeling is probably one of the larger basement uh, construction uh, firms in the Denver area. We work all around the entire metro area. Uh, we do some uh, in-house designing, interior designs. We do basement uh, finishing the construction management uh, through a subcontract model, which tends to be very, uh, it works really well. It's fluid depending on what the client wants. We work across a lot of different uh, price ranges uh, from the very deluxe to very simple and just extra space for the family to recreate. So uh, we've been uh, awarded a few uh, points along the way. Uh, we've been recognized by Remodel Magazine as one of the top 50 in the country. Uh, we've also, uh, in the Builder 550, which is another recognition by Hanley Wood, uh, the producers of Remodel Magazine, and locally here, the Denver Business Journal has awarded us one of the fastest growing companies. So now you know why they have an online series. Blue Sky Remodeling obviously has vetted and has been doing a ton of great projects around Denver. So, And I can't wait. It's, now you have some pictures and some examples of some of your work today. Is that right? Right, we'll show you some of the things that we utilize here, tools, techniques, and some of the technology that we have at our disposal to make sure a client has a good experience. Excellent. So stay tuned for that. We're going to have that coming up, but let's jump in. So first off, what are the main reasons that people decide to finish a basement? Well, I'd say the main reason is the, uh, the family's growing. The family's expanding and needs some additional space. Uh, the uh, Most builders provide all the... Uh, requisite rooms of kitchen, bathrooms, and bedrooms, and uh, maybe a family or dining room. And uh, we build all the fun spaces uh, below um, that uh, the family can then grow, expand. The kids are uh, hanging out with their friends, and they're bringing their own adult friends over. So generally, it's for the family growing. So definitely, I, mean, I was thinking in terms of play areas and storage and things like that, that's probably the first thing to go as the family grows. They move into those areas, and so you do need to take that unfinished basement and do something with it because it's just square footage that's sitting there. That's right. Oh, that's exactly right. Instead of moving, you, you might as well take advantage of the space that you have. And uh, we tend to work for a lot of people that are ex a lot of expecting uh, parents, <laughs> a lot of babies on the way, uh, and so they want their the grandparents to come and stay with them. And uh, so that's another area where you know we can create another bedroom and some privacy down there, and so the family can stay close together. I think that is one of the bigger issues when you have people come and stay because you know usually people come for a long weekend, right? So having that little bit of privacy, so you can just kind of. Go downstairs, right? <laughs> and and yeah. then the family still has, has, you have your own privacy, and they also feel like instead of going to a hotel room, that they have their own sort of hotel space. No, that's exactly right. Definitely. What are some of the more, give, give me some more ideas. So we have play areas, we have storage, uh, and then we, have, of course, have guest areas. Have you done a lot of projects where you end up sort of framing it in the basement so that it is, uh, you know, a laundry room? And then Because a lot of times, isn't it just laundry room? It's concrete and unfinished walls and a washer and dryer. 
Yep, with lots of spider webs and creepy windows, and it's it's too dark with the two light bulbs down there, right? Right. Yeah, it's, it's very and you're always space. running up the stairs because you're scared. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's the old spooky space. Yeah. Uh, a lot of yeah. things that we also are putting in you would ask me uh, exercise rooms are big so the you know instead of having to get gym memberships and, and leave the house at six in the morning or five in the morning uh, we, we do a lot of areas that uh, double between exercise and craft uh, larger family rooms where the kids can go down and play their games or the dads can go down and watch their football and not have to worry about uh, taking up the main level spaces so yeah, kind of turning those creepy basement unlit spiderweb into a, a room that feels just like it does upstairs. Well lit, it's warm, you know, it has a nice uh, finish to it that looks just like the upstairs or better usually. Well, and you're right. We missed one of the main ones is the man cave. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it doesn't seem to. It's like the family cave. The uh, the I think the older uh, HGTV man cave uh, is is kind of more like their new show called the Fam Cave. That, that's more, I think, what we uh, gear towards, uh, and not just build the uh, Uber bar with all the pub stuff, the darts and shuffle boards, although those usually do get added in uh, for the whole family to enjoy. But, yeah, it's probably where the guys will go uh, down to, uh, and to enjoy the football games. Right. Well, I like Fam Cave. That's fantastic. That you just you coined a new one. Hashtag Fam Cave. I also like Wo Man Cave. That would be yes. mine. So. <laughs> Ma'am Cave. Yes, right. Yeah. Wo Man. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> All right. So give me an idea in general, just for more of a basic. If you're going to maybe turn it into one room, how long does that take for the project, kind of from start to finish? You know, it, it's so custom. But let's just kind of take it at, at just one nice big large recreation room at the bottom of the stairs. Probably between three and four weeks. It's wow. it's very simple. It requires very little electrical, no plumbing, the uh, framing and drywall and paint and trim, and then you're you're pretty much have a room. So uh, probably three weeks to four weeks to do something very simple like that. Now that's the design, really encouraging. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Julie. As you get more complicated, the design itself can take sometimes longer than the actual building of the basement. We have we go through sometimes multiple iterations as we the spaces get more complicated. Uh, making sure that the homeowners can see exactly how everything's going to fit together. And so the sometimes we go through quite a few more weeks of design than we actually do building the space. So the, the larger basements, they're going to be more involved. They're going to take more like seven to eight weeks. And we might spend just as much time designing it before we jump into the actual building of it. We're going to segue into another section here in a second. But with that idea, it sounds like there is a lot of time that you dig into lifestyle with people and get them thinking long term because they are going to remodel what exactly they want to use it for. So tell me a little bit about that when you meet and go through the design process. OK. Our, I mean, our approach is, is really replicates a very standardized design build methodology. So the first appointment, uh, once we've spoken with them on the phone and understand what type of project they want to do, that they've got some idea of how much it's going to cost and how long it'll take to say, it sounds like the project is very feasible. So once we've reached that feasibility point, we get into the design phase. And as Julie mentioned, it can take one or two weeks, or, and it sometimes can take two or three months. Uh, even on the more elaborate and more expensive spaces, the family may actually choose to put it off for uh, six months or a year or more uh, to make sure that the funds are all available once they understand truly what all the costs are involved. So the design part of it is immediately what we kind of jump into to begin designing the space uh, based on a, a series of questions. We have a pretty long questionnaire that we complete during the first interview meeting to really understand what the family's goal is for the space. So once we understand what the goal is, then we can help apply all the normal design methodologies to just creating a really nice floor plan. And then the iterated process begins to refine those spaces, make this room a few inches smaller, add a second vanity in the bathroom, all the things that uh, we may not catch in the very first pass. So we do allow the design creativity process to, to take whatever life of its own. Sometimes we'll hit two and three revisions. Sometimes we're out to 10 or 11 revisions. It's, it's important to get it just right. Uh, because right. once you start, it only takes eight weeks and it's all done. 
Right. And then it's there. I mean, so you're helping them to build something that's long term. So getting it right instead of, you know, having to remodel the remodel, you want to get it right from the first time so that it lasts for them for a really, really long time. And I want to remind everybody our actually our next show is actually going to be about financing. So tune in for that because that's the other piece that goes with this yeah. as you're deciding yeah. about your design, right? Is how much you can afford and where you want to put your funds in. And please go to blue sky remodeling denver.com, sign up for updates, and then of course we've got that nifty little um, free basement finishing cost estimator. So that'll go in line with our next show too. So let's take a little bit more about basement designs for kids, which is so much fun. I know, you know, there's everything from player areas to storage and webcams and safety, right? Because it's almost like a little, uh, you know, a, a daycare depending on the, the age. So you want to be able to keep an eye on them. Yeah, a lot of times the design will reflect the age of the children at the time uh, and also allow some flexibility. We don't want to just build a something that would be very, very much just a kid's playroom and the little playhouse and the little ladders and things right at the bottom of the stairs where three years from now and when the kids are, are no longer four and five and six years old, they're going to want the space to hook up the Wii and the Xbox. So we do try and design the spaces that kind of meet today's needs and then also think about, well, what does it look like in three or four or five years from now to make sure the space really works well. And oftentimes you do want to keep the younger kids closer to the stairs, closer to where you can see and hear them directly down from when you're upstairs. A lot of times that will determine whether we take the doorways off of the stairs and completely open them to the main level so that you can easily see and hear the noises below. And uh, we can always put doors back, but uh, <laughs> but right. that's a lot of times what we think about for the kids is, is fun spaces. And uh, we do have our families too that, that know that in probably four or five years they'll probably need to remodel that kids area because we do build some sort of like a little almost built-in playhouse. And it's fun for the kids for a few years. It keeps the neighbors' kids, you know, from running around through around the streets and just down in their basement, uh, knowing that they'll probably have to take that out in a few years once they need that space back for their exercise room or the man cave. <laughs> and it and it sounds like when you design the playhouse, you better get ready for some traffic because all the kids in the neighborhood want to come over and hang out at the at the playhouse you space, yeah. right? You got the coolest house on the block at that point. Yep. Just have to change out the carpet or whatever's going down the stairs because all the kids show up. I love that. It's it's more of a like from Legos to Xbox. That's the transition that you make in designing it, right? Finished basements are great new toys. Everybody loves to come see the new finished basements. They, uh, whether it's the adults or the kids, it's, it attracts a lot of the neighbors. Again, that's what adds value to your home as well is when people okay. come over. Like, let me show you our new basement. We're so excited about it. Absolutely. And then, of course, for resale, it's huge. Yeah, depending what part of the country you're in. Uh, here in Denver, we probably enjoy a pretty transient uh, group of people. So we have a lot of mother-in-laws and father-in-laws that come and travel out of state. We have brothers and sisters that don't live here. Uh, so we do. We finish a lot of uh, basements that include those bed and bath areas and uh, recreating areas, knowing that they're going to be at least 10 or 15% of the time occupied by family members. Uh, they tend to be really great resale uh, pieces. One of the planning and designing, going back to that thought, is that we build something that is good as a legacy to leave for the next family that might want to buy the home, that it really fits well with the organic, uh, the home's organic structure and, and rooms. So it has those rooms that it's missing upstairs and adds uh, more interest and appeal. So we find that uh, oftentimes return on investment is, is very, very high. Uh, I think even in the remodel magazine, cost versus value, which just came out this month, uh, lists it across the country, generally between 78 and 85 percent return on investment immediately. Wow. But we actually build for less dollar per square foot than most of what they're talking about. We find the return on investment is much higher than that, uh, perhaps even greater than 100 uh, percent. And then after yeah. a couple years, you find that that extra square footage certainly goes into the increase of the uh, home's value. And we've I had appraisals that. done on. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, May. Oh no, I love I love that the legacy for the next family. That's that's such a great way to say that too. That it's something that is a showcase for them, but it, for the next family that goes in, it works for them too. Yeah, it, it's hard to stay in any home for more than ten or twelve or fifteen years. You, you eventually want to expand even more, move to a different part of the city or even out of state. And uh, so we make sure that the designs are are not completely, you know, centric on just that family. Unless they want to, absolutely, we can design some, and have done once in a while a real crazy space that's very much just for that family, and they don't care what's next. 
We do have a comment from the audience if you wanted to know what's the most unique basement design feature that you've seen. And then, Julia, I know you also have a picture to show us, too, so let's jump into that for a second. Okay, yeah, we've done some, that's a great question. Uh, we've done some really cool uh, things. When I think uniqueness, or I don't know if the audience member is describing kind of like those specialized spaces, wine cellars and, and really unique and, and intricate wet bars, uh, fun spaces that include like little poker rooms with uh, specially designed lighting and soffits, two-sided fireplaces and, and pool areas, uh, interesting round walls, and uh, a, we have one that has a dedicated home theater uh, with very specially constructed walls and insulation and, and HVAC. Uh, we did have a basement uh, about two years ago that everything went into that one basement. So as far as uniqueness, that probably is one of the most unique just because it had everything in it and it really came out super. Um, we haven't built many like crazy things. I can't say anything unique among, uh, you know, we built one that had a little climbing gym in it. Uh, we, uh, we do a lot of uh, dance ballet once in a while, you know, with mirrors and bars. So there's nothing crazy, I don't think. So I don't know if that was kind of the question towards that uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Um, we've uh, we've excavated basements out. We've taken entire uh, basements and made them taller, uh, which is a pretty unique construction method. Uh, you just end up with a taller basement than you would have otherwise. But there's a lot of work involved with the structural of the home to do that. Uh, we've we've excavated out crawl spaces and turned those into wine cellars. Uh, that's kind of fun. You use some of the geotechnical cooling of just being in the crawl space itself to keep the uh, the wine cellar cooled naturally. Uh, so hopefully that gets to kind of that question was for uniqueness. No, definitely. And, we're, and it sounds like you've, and I love that you're saying you actually drop things so that you do have the taller ceiling. That has to be an issue, especially with some of the older homes as well, structurally, of how safe is it to, to excavate, excavate further. So I'm sure you help them decide on that too, of picking their battles. Do you want a taller ceiling or is it cost? You have to think about those different different things as well. Exactly. They built that house uh, before there was even cars and uh, it's an old brick foundation and you know they didn't have the construction methods or materials that we do nowadays. So we do bring those, have to bring those really old buildings, the 1920 and older buildings, pretty significantly up to par. Hey, let's check out that shiny picture you have queued up for us. Okay, no. So this projects. is a uh, just an example of a kids play area that we were talking about and uh, there's lots of storage built into it so you can see the bookcases with the little cubbies and so you can stay organized with all the kids toys which kind of hides them but still makes them accessible and then um, the the seat kind of the window seat also doubles as more storage uh, as far as a you can lift up the lid and put more toys inside there and of course uh, so it's nice with a little crafty area where kids can get all their stuff out. and It still looks nice, though, once it's all put away and you can get them to clean up, of course. But <laughs> Right. That's, it's important for design, too, to, if you're right, make it easy for things to be put away quickly, easily, and then it has a clean look and it, it still the design still comes through. That looks beautiful, by the way. And that's probably a big deal. Do you also work with the windows as well so that um, it's not these, you know, tinier windows? You can, you can make those deeper well windows for the space and have more light? We do. We expand a lot of the uh, the smaller basement windows, those little small basement windows we all kind of grew up with and think about as a basement window. Uh, the particular picture that we were just looking at, uh, they were lucky enough to have a nice walkout. So they've got very large windows along the entire walkout wall. And, and so we're using the natural light and using that, that play area uh, in an area of the basement that's still connected with the main recreating the family room. So it's still connected. So we had to kind of gear down a little bit. Sometimes we'll paint kids places with really bright colors and stripes on the walls and pinks and yellows, things that are very bright and friendly. This is inside of a family room and they just wanted to keep it all kind of in that muted earth tone. Um, but the, the cabinetry and everything that uh, was custom built in place uh, using a, a knotty alder, that's why the wood looks a little bit uh, muted and stained. It's a knotty alder uh, wood. It goes along with the theme of the basement, kind of rustic, a little bit more of a mountain. We use a lot of mountain theme here with stone and, and old uh, knotty woods, uh, beetle kill pine and, and things of that li big log fireplace mantles. Uh, so the kids' playroom kind of fit into that, but yet still really neat and finishes the space well. 
So once the kids get a little older and they don't need the baskets of uh, playthings, uh, it can still be utilized as a small little library, a little reading nook. So it takes a second or a third uh, use out of it. It'll get a long, long, long way. It looks beautiful. It looks wonderful. Listen, if you're just turning in, you're watching the Basement and Remodeling Basics show, and it's brought to you by Blue Sky Remodeling. We're talking with Adam and Julie of Blue Sky Remodeling. They're giving us a ton of great information and ideas about remodeling your basement and what goes into the design and the whole process. So let's go on to entertainment areas, gatherings for the family. We've touched on that. We, I'd like to touch a little bit more on the importance of built-ins and wiring in the design. You were just talking about that with the built-in and the shelves. And how does that go more with, with spaces for entertaining family and friends? Well, like you mentioned earlier, it's storage, storage, storage. We try and find every little spot that uh, can meet the family storage needs. This is where all the – when it comes in – down to like a family or room or an entertaining area, media, uh, maybe not even full-on home theaters. Not many people go for the full theater experience anymore, but we're still building in a lot of nice infrastructure wiring into the family rooms. So you get, you've got the surround sound already built into the walls uh, so that you don't have to have exposed speakers everywhere. Uh, a lot of times we'll bring, uh, from the audio source, we'll bring additional speakers that go into bar areas, exercise rooms, even the kids' play areas. Uh, so you can have distributed audio and video. You can play different TV. Uh, so we coach and work with our clients on, uh, as part of that design, is, is how we're going to put in the low-volt infrastructure into the basement. How is that going to work for the family? And, and generally, that's a, you can never put in too much wire behind the walls, too much speaker wire and audio wire, because uh, you always want more. Once you have it, you really enjoy having that distributed uh, sound through the basement. So wiring and storage kind of go along with those big areas because it, that's usually where the family's going to recreate. They're going to store books and DVDs and CDs, the kids' games, uh, the adults' games for that matter, and, uh, right. and the kind of center of the uh, media experience for the house. It really is an important point of getting that wiring correct so that each room can feel separate but yet you control it. Right? So if you're in this room and you're working out, you can have this going on, this music, the TV here, but then it's separate so it still stays really functional as well. I can be here and it's, it's my little space and then I'm over here. Maybe it's a home office that's down there. A lot of people use it for that too. It looks like we have another picture queued up that's going to blow our minds. Let's see it. <laughs> well, this is just an example of a kind of a dual room that serves as a family room where you can hang out, watch movies cozy up by the fire, and then there's the wet bars kind of right next to it. And we'd like to do like a lot of nice details, like the tray ceiling you see. It really defines the space. and gives it some just some visual details that you wouldn't always expect in a basement. Um, so that's, and you can see it's kind of the speakers, I don't know if you can see those under the pictures on the wall or by the TV. So that's kind of some of that uh, audiovisual that Adam was talking about as far as building these things into your plan and having that ready to go. Um, we've also done some other ones that are uh, a little more, uh, this is just another example. You can see the, the TV and the whole entertainment center around it, uh, the cabinets below so you can hide a lot of your components and those kinds of things. And um, in other cases, we've done full-blown theaters like this one where you have the large screen and uh, they actually have some really cool <laughs> uh, recliners in there so they can sit back and you can see the equipment's in the back. So you can go real simple with it, or you can make it uh, super fancy and have a whole room dedicated to just just watching movies. Yeah. I need the address you know that for that place. Generally <laughs> comes down to that discussion around budget, right? <laughs> if, yes. If you've got money to spend, we can certainly find a good place to, to put it for you. It'll give you a really nice experience. Uh, and, and most people don't want to spend the kind of money to put into a full theater. It's really the equipment that is what's staggering. Uh, so then we have to put into the design where does the equipment go, like Julie said? Does it just go in a base cabinet somewhere? Because most people don't want all those blinking blue and green and red lights uh, exposed next to the TV. The old entertainment center we had as, you know, growing up again, that it was just everything was just on a shelf right below the TV. Nowadays, we have these nice flat screen TVs. It's hung on the wall. It looks like a piece of art. And the, all of the media equipment, the source equipment, is somewhere else in the basement. So we run conduits for future expansions on the type of technologies. And we have gear rooms sometimes, even full racks of equipment. It's either concealed behind a hidden bookcase somewhere, or it's just in an unfinished area nearby. Uh, we try and make it easily accessible so that it's, it's usable, not hard to get at. The wiring is all easy. 
you know, you always hate having to reach behind a receiver or a, a piece of gear to try and pull out that HDMI cable. You got to pull the whole thing out, and so we try and make it all as easy as possible too. Part of the functional of the design. Mm -hmm. That's such a great point about the about the wiring and so forth and having. I was going to ask you about that that separate closet or something separate so that you're you're still keeping the integrity of the beauty of the design. And there's you know, a lot of times you'll you will you'll see these beautiful furniture and design and then these <laughs> all these cables and wires coming through. It's always such a problem for people. And we yeah. we have a great comment from the audience as well saying that space is gorgeous. I've never seen a tray ceiling in a basement. I was thinking the same thing. I mean, talk about making that just seem so open. I mean, I would not think that's a basement at all. Yeah, a lot of times half of that tray ceiling is based out of necessity. We have ductwork and beams, other uh, things that hang below the uh, ceiling joists that we need to accommodate. And then it's just based on the, uh, I'd say, the technical savvy of the designer to make sure that you, you bury what needs to be buried and then you add other soffits to make the ceilings really one of a kind. It creates the space uh, blocking without having any walls, so it really does create special kind of spaces uh, just defined by the ceiling itself. It adds a little bit of height. You have that different, uh, it's called compression and release of the space. So as you walk under a soffit, you feel the space get smaller and then expand again as it opens up. It makes the room feel larger even though the ceiling is at the same height as it always was. Uh, so we utilize those soffits in, in both of those reasons. And then throwing in some ground molding, some rope light, uh, really can give a room a lot of ambience without having harsh down lights or anything, which sometimes for watching TV and evening uh, viewing, it's nice not to have those recessed lights, which is a very common way to light a space. But they're kind of harsh. They come straight down at you, and it's harder to watch TV. It, it sometimes causes some shadows or some uh, glares on the screen. So a lot of design into, the, uh, into each ceiling and then what it looks like. And it really helps define a space and make it look really kind of cool. Just like those viewers said. Here's a quick question for you too. What about actually a, a rep repurposing a room like that, or unwinding a room? Let's say you've decided you're going to turn it into the game room or the wine cellar. Uh, how's that for for switching things around on a design of a room? Yeah, it, you know, it, again, let's just you kind of take it in reverse, and like you, you start with something that's already there. And then what's the shortest path, either one, the least expensive, or the most functional pathway to get what you want done. So it's just kind of designing kind of in reverse um, and figuring out what you can keep and what you need to remove. We call demo, demolish, uh, take some walls out. You see it on HGTV all the time, guys with their cameras and stuff, taking walls out and cutting studs and making new openings where there wasn't one, closing in a door and doing some drywall patching. So. It's very, very easy to, to manipulate, modify walls, and, and make a room into something different. It's really that's not actually, difficult. That's excellent. Well, when you're that's professional, it's difficult. <laughs> excellent distinction. Don't try this at home. Have somebody else try this at home that knows how to do right. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, always with the caveat. You know, we're, we're the pros. It's it, it looks a lot easier than it really is in practice. There's a lot of code regulations that need to be followed. There's a lot of safety regulations with wiring and the, and the plumbing that could be behind walls that you just don't want to get into it if you don't if you haven't done it before it's very it can be really daunting and you can make a mess of your house real quick absolutely and uh, really and that's where you live so that's that's also a great point I mean you're this is unless you just plan on spending some money and go staying somewhere else you really do want to start it right from the beginning and then it doesn't extend out longer yep, which is yep. what also happens when projects aren't started and designed and then executed properly you touched on it briefly before we'll just talk on it real quick about wine cellars that you're utilizing that you take advantage of that crawl space area is that something that's real popular Are you seeing a lot of wine cellars I know I would like one yes please <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. Uh, I, yeah, I think probably a quarter to a third of our of our spaces. Uh, again, depending on the, the demographic and, and where we're building, some of our simpler basements we just they just won't be adding those kind of spaces in. Uh, either the house is a little smaller and it doesn't have that physical space. But in the larger basements and the ones where the, our our owners want to spend a little bit more money, uh, a wine cellar is a really excellent way to efficiently store a lot of wine bottles. Uh, in a very, very small space. Uh, we'll bring up a couple of pictures that uh, can show it. Here's one right here, a real modest space. Uh, it probably only stores about a 280 bottles. But that's oh, still a lot more than what you could put in a refrigerator. So yeah. if you have a little bit of wine and not a ton of wine, that's a neat way to do it and have something to really talk about with your friends. Uh, this one actually is the one that's cut into the crawl space. 
Uh, you can see a mechanical cooling unit in the background there because uh, we do, the, this client wanted to keep that room very, very humidity and, and uh, condition, uh, temperature controlled uh, to a very fine degree. So uh, the racking and the wine materials that go into the room are important, but how the room is constructed, the way it's built, is probably even more important to keep the cool, humid air in without damaging the drywall, causing mold problems, and also just spending a lot of energy that you don't need to. Uh, so this is a pretty simple little uh, wine cellar. So you, you, they don't have to be these big elaborate things that you, you know, imagine. So this is done on a very, very kind of a low cost basis. And uh, we talked with the owners and, and the, I did the interior design on this one as well. It, we kind of added some uh, a throwback to what looks like kind of like a barrel type ceiling with the wood on the ceiling. It's just kind of fun. It, there's, it has no technical function at all other than just looking cool. <laughs> So that's usually what wine cellars are fun. You can play in those rooms. Those are those are fun adult playrooms. They're they're a, they're a piece of art in themselves. It looks like too. You're 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 displaying your wine bottles, and it just looks beautiful. And impressing your friends. It's just trying to keep the wine uh, supplied. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that's that's your next problem when you do that. Listen, we're yeah. getting to the, right as is getting that. So we are getting to the end of the show. As you can tell, we have a ton of information. Let's touch briefly on, and then we can go into this in other shows. And of course, you're watching the basement and remodeling basics. We have Blue Sky Remodeling that's giving you all this information. Let's talk real quickly about when to get architects involved in permitting, and then of course, on another show, we can dive into that deeper. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I, I say the, the the biggest question that you asked there. Uh, is should you get an architect or not? Uh, I, I think really lends itself to, you know, most homeowners don't know. It does it take an architect to design a basement? Uh, it, it does not take an architect. There's there's no reason the building department requires an architect or professional stamp. So covering that basis, now architects are very talented at floor plans, space layout, utilization, uh, how to actually use hallways and foyers, how to use that compression and release of ceiling elements and designs to make the space really organic to the house but feel special uh, so we take the family's input as well. It doesn't need to be an architect but it has to be someone who's very skilled at basement layout, very skilled at, and I say basement layout because you have to work around some things that are there that architects don't work when they design a house. We have beams and columns, we have ductwork and air conditioning lines, we have windows that are already in a certain place that we have to design the space around what's there, what we call existing conditions. And so, as long as a person designing the basement is fairly skilled at it, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I do all of our basement designs, and, and now I have someone working with me. Uh, I do call on interior designers now and again to kind of help me get over a hump if we have a, a family that wants some real attention to material palettes and colors. But I've been doing it for 15 years, so I have a lot of experience doing it. I don't have an architectural degree. I do have a technical degree in engineering, but that, I don't think that helps me much. So it kind of answers that question. Uh, Julie, after seeing a bunch of these and, and building them with me, could sit down to the designs too. And she's actually done some design elements and modifications, talking with owners who were uh, just inquiring about what they could do with the space. So once you're used to it, you've seen a lot, we've built hundreds and hundreds, uh, you get a good feel for what is going to work well for that family based on what they've asked for and knowing all of the code regulations and just the general architectural kind of rules out there. Uh, we do it in-house. I mentioned in the very early in the program about design-build methodology. So our designs and our budgets run completely in parallel with one another. One just can't exist without the other. And it always comes down to being kind of boring sometimes. If they've got just so much budget available to the project, then sometimes that will drive the amount of design elements that we can put into the space the amount of detail and the amount of expensive materials. Uh, we break it all out. It's very, very itemized. It's very, ex we expose them to the learning curve of everything as well as expose them to all of the vendors, materials, suppliers that we utilize. So the design itself, yes, an architect could do it and I do actually work with a couple architects that have designed some spaces. Sometimes architects will bring me in and say, I'd like you to build this basement that I've designed. Uh, but I would say 99%. We design in-house for ourselves, for our clients. Uh, it saves them some money uh, because it's just part of our overhead of working on the basement where they don't actually have to spend another one to $2,000 perhaps on an architectural uh, uh, drawing, which doesn't do much more than what we've already done in-house. 
that's great information. I think there is a lot of confusion on that, so it's great to know it can be a one-stop shop type of thing, so you're not bringing in a bunch of people. Yes, it takes a village yeah. on some things, obviously, and you know when to bring in people, but mm -hmm. you can also do it very easily. Yeah, yeah, we can do it easily just because we have a lot of experience doing it. There's a lot of companies out there that have been around for a long, long time, but if you haven't designed a whole bunch of basements or been around the architects for as long as we have, uh, you, you probably could be doing your clients a disservice by trying to design something, making it too simplistic, or designing something that just won't work in the cities or the code's eye. Once the city inspector comes out, he's got the final jurisdiction on whether you did it right or not. And at that point, it's too late. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, listen, we are coming. <laughs> exactly, and that's definitely what, what we don't want. <laughs> <Sorry>. So <laughs> far too late. Well, listen, Adam and Julie, you have given us so much information. Did we not say at the top of the hour you were going to get so much information on the show? And this is just the first one, so it's been great. This is our inaugural for the first of the online series of Basement and Remodeling Basics. So stay tuned. We're going to be covering finance and uh, for financing your remodeling project on the next show, right? That's right. right. And that one, we just touched on that, about about spending money at the at the end of it. So we'll yeah. definitely do that. We'll also be getting into moving out versus living in and during living in your home during remodel, a great point we touched on as well. So as always, make sure to go to blueskyremodelingdenver.com. You can go and sign up for updates. We'll email you when the next show is coming. Go to YouTube and also subscribe to Blue Sky Remodeling. And then make sure when you go to their website, you have the free basement finishing cost estimator. And again, we'll jump into the next one. So on behalf of Adam and Julie and the Blue Sky team, I'm Mia Voss, and we'll see you on the next show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>